Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. It's April 2019. I've recently finished or more or less finished my large series of aircraft specific tutorials and so now we're getting on to our next series which is going to be air to air combat. We're going to be looking at everything ACM, BVR, firing missiles, defending missiles, just about everything we can think of. So we're starting on probably the most fun bit which is evading short range IR guided missiles. So first let's define the scope of this particular video. We're going to split it obviously into many separate videos. The video scope is we're looking at IR guided missiles only. That's obviously uh, the whole range of AIM-9s we're going to be looking at. The uh, This will be the R-60, the R-73. It technically will be the R-27ET, the long range, and, and the T model, the long range IR guided Russian missile, as long as it's used within these parameters in, in terms of range. We're looking at ranges of being fired between one to five miles, depending on aspect. The missiles that we're gonna be using in, in these tutorials are the hardest ones to dodge, the most modern ones. We've got the Russian R-73, this is the modern vectored thrust, high gimbal limit censored Russian missile, uh, which is, you could say, is the equivalent to the AIM-9X, I guess. And then the AIM-9X, an even more modern NATO version, again, vectored thrust, high gimbal limit IR sensor. And the AIM-9X is, of course, the, uh, the best missile in DCS at the moment in terms of maneuverability. Well, maneuverability is probably comparative to the R-73, but in terms of sensor definition and sensitivity, it's certainly the best and of course the AIM-9X is a non-smoked missile while the 73 is a smoked missile. Next thing for our tests speeds we're going to be assuming typical ACM speed so it's going to be 400 to 450 knots for the aggressor and for the defender. For the aggressor we've chosen a mixture of flanker and Hornet and for the Defender we've chosen F-15 just because the F-15 is well, it's just average in every department really isn't it. The first and most obvious thing you can't defend against a FOX-2 type missile and of course an IR guided missile is a FOX-2 missile. You can't defend against a FOX-2 missile if you don't know it's been shot at you. So how do you know it's been shot at you? Unless you have an aircraft which can actually warn you that an IR missile has been shot. I think the Mirage can and I think the A-10 can from doing my old videos. But generally, otherwise speaking, none of these planes will actually warn you if an IR missile has been shot at you. So you have to see visually with your eyes this missile being shot at you. Now that's much easier if it's an R-73 in this case. It's a white smoke missile. Very easy to see if it's been shot. The AIM-9X, very hard to see. The only thing you can see the AIM-9X is the dot, the missile itself, and a bit of flame plume behind it. So you've got to be really good at spotting these. I'm completely hopeless at spotting this. I'm too old, I'm too cancer-ridden to spot this kind of missile, but uh, top fighters can spot this type of missile. So you've spotted the missile coming from where the hostile plane is. You've got uh, uh, eyes on the hostile plane as well. So how do you know it's a FOX-2 and not another type of missile, a radar, semi-active radar guiding missile or a fully active radar guiding missile, i.e. FOX-1 or FOX-3? Well, we'll know because all modern relevant dogfighters are going to have an RWR system that will warn you if the hostile has fired at you with a FOX-1 missile or a FOX-3 missile. The FOX-1 type missile, for instance an AIM-7 or an R-27R, can only be fired if the aggressor is using a single target track or something similar that will give us an audible and visual warning from the RWR system so we'll know that we're being shot at by a FOX-1 immediately and therefore we know it's not a FOX-2. If it's a FOX-3 type missile, that's a missile that might not necessarily give you a warning when it's being shot at you, but we can eliminate that worry in the scope of this video because if a FOX-3 type missile, we're talking an AMRAAM, an R-77, a an AIM-54 Phoenix were to shoot at us in at this range of the scope of this video, even if they were using a track while scan type firing method, where, which would not directly give us a warning from the mothership's radar. As soon as that missile leaves the rails of the aircraft, it will go fully active. It will lock us up with its own radar in an STT type lock, and we would immediately get an RWR warning as well. So, the moral of the story is if you can see a missile being shot at you from within five miles and you don't get an RWR warning on, then you know it's going to be a FOX-2. So we've looked at the scope of this video, the type of missiles I'm going to have shot at me today, what kind of typical speed we're going to be, going to be doing if we're doing our job right, and how we know if a FOX-2 has been shot at us. Next, we're going to look at the three variants 
of dodging, if you like, that we're going to be doing. We're going to be splitting it, splitting it into three. A head-on aspect, i.e. if we're heading roughly towards the aggressor and he fires at us. Second is a side aspect where we're going to be a beam to the aggressor and the aggressor shoots us from the side. And then the dreaded rear aspect where the hostile is chasing us and how we're going to dodge from there. So the head-on aspect first. We are heading towards the aggressor. We can see him. The range that he's going to fire at optimally for a head-on shot is going to be between two to five miles, any less than two miles, and he's going to start risking his uh, missile not being able to fuse in time by hitting us. So we're going to assume the missile is going to be shot between two to five miles, and that's what we're going to try on our uh, attempt. So what happens in this case? Well, the first thing before we even spot the missile in this case is if we suspect that he's going to fire a missile is we're going to turn directly into him. In all of these cases, the best end product of our aircraft before or after the missile dodge is that we've turned into him at low range because what we want to do is to stop him as well as dodging his missile we need to stop him firing again at us the best way of doing that is to be hot against him so we can have the highest closure rate possible that means we can get together below missile firing range which is depending on the aspect to say roughly about one mile um, in a head-on and that means we can even the scores we can turn it turn this into a dogfight a proper dogfight and um, We can hopefully win that dogfight. So we're going to turn into the target Next thing is we need to spot the missile the best way if you've got bad eyes like me is to zoom in on the HUD and Just look um, if you've got better eyes, then you're not going to have to zoom in but spot the missile Next there's going to be a spool delay Which is just your natural human delay time until you can spot the missile and actually start acting That's going to be between 0.25 and 0 0.0 uh, sorry, 0.5 seconds from our study. The next thing we're going to do is to throw our throttle into idle. So in all of these examples, to beat an infrared guided missile, our, throttles, our engines have to be as cold as possible. Obviously, that's how the IR missiles work. And so the first thing we're going to do once we've spotted the missile is engines to idle. There's no way around that. That's just what we have to do. Now, we're not going to wait for our engines to spool down. We're always going to have a fighter with big engines and a lot of rotational momentum. So we're just going to start acting as soon as we've put the throttle to the idle position. In the head-on, we're always going to do, do a low radius barrel roll. So we're going to start that barrel roll from pitch up. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn either left or right slightly. So we're going to roll either left or right slightly. We're going to intermediate or light back stick and then perform a barrel roll. I'm not going to try and describe the movements of the stick that you have to do. You know, you, you guys can all do a barrel roll. Um, generally speaking, the smaller radius of this barrel roll tends to be the better. The bigger radius you do doesn't really seem to help and it'll just slow you down more. It'll increase more drag, more alpha and whatnot and you'll just come out uh, uh, slow at the end. Whether you do it left or right, I've never found a circumstance where you need to choose left or right, so just do whatever you feel comfortable with at the time. At the end of the barrel roll, uh, you, the name of the game is to I obviously have dodged the missile during the barrel roll and to come out after a full 360 rotation as fast as you can, um, uh, scrubbed as least less speed as you can because, you again, we want to keep that head-on aspect going as fast as we can to close as quickly as we can so he doesn't get a chance to switch to guns or fire a second Fox 2. Okay, as we start the barrel roll, so basically simultaneously, we're going to put flares out. And that does not mean one flare every second, one flare every two seconds. It means flaring properly. If you want to beat a missile, a real missile, especially one of these good ones, you've got to flare like hell. And that means 10 out second. So, ba 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 ba. Uh, so, you can either set up a, uh, a profile for that, a program for that, or realistically, what we're going to do is just set it to manual from the pilot's position, depending on what aircraft you've got, and just bang that flare button as continuously as you can. So, in the F 15, we've got no programmable flare, so I'm just going to bang that button, uh, as you can see there. Once we've completed the dodge, we finished our flares. Uh, next is power on. Hopefully, we've retained as much speed as possible, as low alpha as possible and then power on and re-engage. So let's look at this example. We are always, uh, the defender is always in the purple arrow direction. The missile is coming from the red direction. As soon as that missile is fired, a slight roll to the right. Then I'm gonna barrel roll, back stick and roll to the left to go around the full 360 barrel roll. Come out here, stop flaring, power on and re-engage. So this particular example is not a very good example because I'm not a very good pilot, to be honest. Uh, my, um, my, my, my radius of my my sectional radius of my barrel roll was too big. I've introduced too much alpha and I've slowed all the way down to 220 knots. So if you like, that's an example of how you don't want to end it. But we dodged the missile, we did the job. Okay, so that 
is the head on. Next, we're going to go to the side aspect. So if the hostile is attacking from the side, they're going to want to be firing at you from two to four miles. All of these IR guided missiles, apart from the long range R27s, have roughly the same amount of uh, burner fuel. So they can all do roughly about the same range. Uh, so it's about two to four miles. You can go slightly closer than two miles, but um, what tends to happen then is from the aggressor's point of view, the left to right movement of the hostile aircraft is so high that it, in, unless you've got a really maneuverable missile, then you're not going to want to do it. You probably could do it with a name like Nexus and an R-73, but trying to, trying to uh, work in generalities here. So anyway, uh, the hostile is coming from this direction where the red arrow is. We are coming from, oh, I'm a city. No, I'm right, sorry. Uh, I'm coming from this uh, purple direction. So the side aspect, first of all, obviously, you've got to spot the missile. We're going to be looking the side out of your window, have identified the target, uh, the aggressor, and see the missile that we've talked about before. First thing we do, throttle the idle. The next thing we're going to do is roll, I struggle, I don't know, really know the name of this move. It's what I call roll hot inverted. So what we're going to do here next is perform a power off split S, but in a split S, what you do is you invert your back stick all the way around, and then um, you come out of the split S, face it the opposite direction out which you came in. In fact, what I've done here, again, it's typical, I chose another bad example. At the end of it, I'm, I'm facing back the way I came. That's not actually what we want. Um, what we want is to come in here, invert, but at an angle which does split S, but at the end of that, we are facing 45 degrees, whoops, 45 degrees to the left. Sorry, I messed that up. 45 degrees to the left. So we actually want to come out of this facing that way there where the hostile is coming from again for the same reasons we said earlier because we want to be fast as we can and hot aspect to uh, uh, raise the closure rate as much as possible okay so we're going to do this inversion we're going to invert and be slightly more rolled to the left in this case so we can come out facing that direction uh, flares exactly as soon as the maneuver starts it's flares 10 a second all the way around uh, we are going to aft stick through this maneuver until we are level again and facing the hostile so facing in this direction and then and hot aspect that is and then power on and re-engage and um, hopefully he won't get the chance to do a second shot and we can then uh, turn it into a dogfight so another way we can think about this is rather than fully inverted we are if you like we're turning um, you'll see better video you'll see a proper three-dimensional video uh, later to show you what this actually looks like but a better way to say is this is we're splitting s we're split sing towards the hostile and one reason we're doing that rather than splitting sing away from the hostile as well as trying to get a uh, hot aspect on the hostile is it keeps our engines facing away from the hostile it's shielding our hot engines behind the body of our aircraft as much as possible so that's another reason why we are doing this kind of turning towards the hostile during the split s right so that's the best i can describe that next is the hardest one so the easiest one is the head-on aspect that's really easy there's lots of room for error in this even against uh, an aim9x i found it very hard to actually get shot down uh, the side aspect is more difficult but as long as you perform the move right then 80 90 percent of the time we found it works Rear aspect, much more difficult. You've got to perform this absolutely perfect. So all of these are all about timing. You've got to time, for instance, this guy here so that the missile merges roughly with us, roughly when we are at the apex of our barrel roll here. This one we've got to time right as well so that the missile is crossing us roughly when we're halfway through the split S move here. Um, I haven't really got any advice how to do that. I, from our experimentation, it just came from experience. You just know roughly when they fired to when you should start pulling the maneuver, how hard you should pull based on where the missile is and whatnot. So I can't really explain that in any more detail. Now, the rear one is really hard. Uh, you have to get the timing perfect to fool the seeker head. So rear aspect, the hostile is only going to be firing between 0.5 miles and 2 miles uh, because if we're at a rear aspect the, the any of the missiles we're talking about today don't have any more range than 2 miles on a on a chase basically so that's something to bear in mind so the hostile will be much closer to you so it's going to be easier to see because it's closer to you but because he's behind you you're going to be looking behind your chair he is actually a lot harder to see so uh, the first thing we're going to do is to spot the missile by looking behind us we're going to throttle the idle. They're going to turn a beam. Uh, so that means what we're doing is we're putting a left roll of 90 degrees and aft stick so that we're putting our plane flying 90 degrees to the missile. That's the best we can do um, in the second or two seconds before this missile hits us. Uh, we're going to do that. Um, throttle is to idle. 
G loading is going to be somewhere between 6 and 9G. I found 6 optimal. It's the balance between not scrubbing off too much speed and doing enough to hide those engines. Uh, once, sorry, throughout that term of a beam, we do phase one flares. So phase one flares all throughout that turning a beam, which is probably about half a second to a second of actual moments. So that's probably about 10 flares out. Once we've got to the beam position, immediately we are going to roll and invert and then back stick and then pull down. So flying a beam is just and flares is just about enough to fool an R73, but it's not enough to fool an Aim9X seeker head. You have to do the two twists if you like to fall an aim line x and that's whenever you're getting shot at any by any missile why don't you just always assume it's an aim line x that means whatever you do you'll always be able to beat any of the missiles okay um so phase one complete we invert we pull more back stick another 6g pull you can see i'm at 5.9 there and you caught me just on my descent and i want to end that move heading fully downwards because by this point to beat an aim line x you've scrubbed off a shed load of your mechanical energy and you've got to get heading down it's your only chance to survive them now um to be able to survive a rear on shot and then get safe i.e the hostile not to be able to just re-engage you quickly and shoot you down is almost impossible so for us going down in this maneuver and because there's no chance of us being able to turn hot we simply won't have enough energy to do this full reversal and head hot at the target it's simply not possible so the best we can do in a rear uh, a rear chase is to do this down movement and at best it's going to buy us a few seconds or we might get lucky the hostile might just lose us in the flares he might have only had one missile left so that's just that's the best we can do for okay so when we're heading down um it's going to be engines back on the missile would have been beaten by then if it's going to be beaten our second set of flares and power on and i haven't said re-engage because realistically you're not going to try and re-engage from this you're just going to head down towards the ground assuming that you've got the height to play with otherwise yeah, you can't do this basically uh, and, and just try and find a way of getting away um, and that's it really just confuse the bad guy he's going to have the energy because you're going to be so far down low by the, at this point you're not going to stand much of a chance now I've said that quite mechanically as if we're going to turn left into a beam head head beam for a couple of miles and then turn down in reality of course it's not like that you've got maximum 1.5 to 2 seconds to beat this thing in reality the beam turn and the invert turn all kind of merge into one and you can see here uh, I think that's probably phase one flares there when the term to be I never never got fully beam I got as best beam as I could and then merge that straight into an inversion and then here's batch two of flares so in reality it's a lot messier uh, but that's you know we're working with physics here and that is the rear aspect survival rates we found head on aspect 100% uh, side aspect we found 80 to 90 to 80 to 90 percent spent depending on which missile you're firing which airplane you've got selected and whatnot rear aspect it seemed to be about 50 50 if you got it absolutely perfectly right if you've got any of that timing wrong or any of those flares wrong then the aim line x will hit you every time uh, the r73 much uh, more prehistoric seek head is uh, a much higher survival rate probably up to about 70 to 80 percent survival rate as long as you get your timing right Right, so you're probably fed up with me yapping on so far. I've covered everything I think I want to cover. Next, we're going to look at the three examples in the cockpit being shot at by R-73s and Aim Line Nexus in the exact scenarios <clears throat> that we've detailed here. After each example, what we're going to go and do then is look at the TAC view so you can see exactly how we did that, what uh, pressure I was putting on the planes, the alpha, the turn, well, you wouldn't really want the turn rate, the G, the speed, and whatnot. And so you can see. And again, as ever, it's the usual rule that if I can do this, anyone can. Because I'm, you know, I'm uh, probably the world's most terrible dogfighter. So always have that. If it looks hard, have that in the back of your mind. Right, so let's get on with it. Okay, so we're on our first of our cases. We're on a head-on. We're against uh, Joker. He's in, in a flanker with an R-73. He's going to fire at us. He's going to fire at us at approximately optimal three miles. We are going to do our barrel roll, as we said. We can start from left or we can start from right. But in this case, we're going to start from right. As soon as we know there's a missile fired, it's engines to idle. Uh, relatively aggressive pull on the stick and spam the flares out like your life depends on it. And as soon as we've merged, then engage into the dogfight. Right, I'm going to unpause now. Rest the speed descent. Aim towards the target. 8k. 7k. 6k. 3, 2, 1, missile. Power down. Oh, I sent it straight away. Hey, a piece of piss. We do that all day. And merge. 
guns. Woo! Right, that's that. Next we'll go try it with the M9X. So I'm going to unpause. Maintain my speed. Four miles. Three, two, one. Fuck me. Uh. It went for the first flurs that you fired. <laughs> Should we try that one again? Have fun. Yeah. Hey, Roger. That's I'm, peculiar. It may have just been luck. Let's try that again. If that happened to me in Satel, I'd literally kill myself. That was pretty. No way, my neck should do that. Yeah. It just must have been luck. I didn't even have my engines powered up by then. Right. Uh, okay. That was weird, but we're going to try it again. Uh, so, uh, I can unpause now. Just so, arrest my speed descent. Head towards the target. Four miles. Three, two, one. Wow. Yeah, defeated. Went for the first missile you fight, uh, the flares you fired again. Wow. Well, that's pretty good. Beautiful barrel roll. Woo! And engage mud! So this is against the R-73 missile. Let's go. So missile's out. About half a second reaction time. I'm going to turn right. Then I'm going to start rolling left. Bucket loads of flares out, up to 7G. I'm trying to maintain our 400 knots, doing pretty well. And that missile is forward and never had a chance. We can come out of this now at a good speed. We're at a good closure rate here. We've got some good angle in comparison to him. So we're at a decent aspect. And he's only 4,500 feet, so there's a good chance he won't be able to follow up with guns here. And we can then engage, do whatever we're going to do to, to engage. So that was pretty, it was pretty hot. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's see when the missile got fooled. I mean, you never really know, but... Pretty about half a second into the roll. Mm. Just gave up and started flying forward. Somewhere at the beginning of that roll, I think, actually fooled the missile. Right, let's go and have a look at the AIM-9X. Okay, missile's out. Half a second or so to realise what's going on. Right, barrel roll left, so a bit of back stick, hard left stick. It looks like, um, um, because it's an aim line X, I know it's going to be harder to beat, so I've put a lot more back stick and a lot more alpha, so I may struggle with this one. Uh, so I've beaten the missile, obviously, but not only to beat the missile, we need to get into position to engage. And you see, I've basically stalled myself out. I've got too high in the alpha, too much back stick, too aggressive. You can see how aggressive that roll was in the middle there. So that was a bit needless, really, and um, because I'm so slow now, that's an easy follow-up guns kill for the, for the Hornet in that case. So it was a good example of how to dodge the missile, but um, I went too aggressively in there, so I would have been killed later on. So that's that. Let's have a look at the second one. Right, so that is 2.7 miles. That was a missile out. Half a second or so to be allowed to be fired at. Maybe a second even. Flares already going out. Let's see if we do a better barrel or the roll this time. It's going up. Right, rolling round left. Beautiful, 400 knots, 7G. Missile never stood a chance. And this time I'm finishing at over 300 knots, so this is much better. And we've closed within 5,000 feet now, so this time it's going to be much harder for him to get a solution on me now. Yeah. Pull up. Probably a fair man's game by the end of that. Okay, uh, so that is the AIM-9X. Right, so side-on shot. Joker is out there. He's about three miles. He's going to fire to... He's going to close to about three miles, about five clicks. He's going to fire. He's going to add a little bit of lead to the missile, but not a huge amount of lead, representing, you know, a real dogfight snapshot. Uh, what I'm going to do is, as soon as I see that missile engine's off, I'm going to roll right. I'm going to roll into him to mask my engines as best I can. I'm going to flares out. I'm going to invert lose altitude and pretty much reverse right are you ready joker same rules as usual yep okay so we're going to unpause to maintain about 400 knots let me just get that up again and a right orbit just to help joker out a little bit six clicks seven click three two one fox two power down Invert. Spam flares. Whee! Good dodge. And engage. 
Right, that's that. Now let's go and try it with the AIM 9X. Stand by. Okay, uh, same thing, AIM 9X now, so uh, more modern seek ahead, much harder to fall. Same thing though, going to turn into it but to mask our engines as much as possible. Invert to keep our energy high. Okay, so we're going to unpause now. Going to maintain my 400 knots. Going to right orbit. Fire when ready. Three, two, one. Missile, missile, missile. Energy, Good dog. Woo! Burn is on. Re-engage. Okay. That was the side. Okay, let's, so let's have a closer look at the side on Dodge. So this is the R73 from Joker. I mean, in the F15, so he's going to fire. About half a second there until I responded. Maybe a second till I found that missile with my eyes. So now I'm going to roll over towards him and down. And it was about 7G, up to 8G, nearly 9G. Wow, pulled a lot there. And you can see the aspect there. It wasn't perfect. I would like a bit more side action there. So remember, if we're diving, because we have to dive because we need to get speed up because we've got no engine thrust at the moment, and we're turning towards them to A, mask our engine, and to B, in ensure we close on the target as soon as possible so he doesn't get a chance for a second shot. And that missile was fooled really soon, look. Or well, just the first few flares, as soon as that engine was cooled down. And we're down. Our speed can start... Can, uh, let off the angle of attack. The speed can start rising. And we can get into a dogfight. He's going to have the advantage here still, but at least we're alive, you know. And we could probably dodge another one. Probably got enough energy in the bird to power up and dodge another one if needs be. Let's move on to the A9X. Okay, should be a, pretty much exactly the same thing. He's going to fire. Half a second for me to find the missile and respond. And I'm responding. I'm turning into him. I'm turning down. See how much G we load up. Going to be up to 9G again. And we've got about the same angle, about 30 degrees from plumb down. All the flares in the world. Where did it fall, the missile? Again, it fooled him really soon, much sooner than I thought it would. It seems those initial flares really do a good job. And we can start unloading the alpha all the way up to 50 degrees angle of attack there. That was pretty ridiculous. So it was because I knew it was an aimline neck, aim neck, so it was full backstick just to absolutely make sure. In reality, I didn't need that much backstick. Probably about 25 to 30 degrees alpha would have done. But... That's how it is, and that's a much better exit. You see, the last exit, I um, I just didn't have enough towards him motion. I was heading this way, and that allowed him to get on me. But now, uh, this is how I should have done it. I should end it facing towards him. So we've now got closure, and he can't really fire another missile. He's got he's within a mile now, and that missile needs about half a mile to fuse. So reaction times and whatnot, and getting the tone on me. He probably hasn't got another chance to fire here. Uh, so that's that's how it should have been done. Um, preferably with not that much alpha though we just went a bit too high on the alpha and you can see our speeds come down to stall speed so we would kept that above 300 like the last time and the direction like we have here then I reckon that would have uh, been a 50-50 then we could have gone into a dogfight right um, so that's that Okay, we're in a rear on aspect now. I'm in the F-15 that's dodging. Joker is in the flanker in this case, shooting an R-73 at me. His optimal firing range, roughly 1.2, 1.3 miles. He's going to be, give me a countdown and a warning, obviously. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn left or right, probably left because I'm left-handed, and I'm going to go engines off. I'm turning left to be in the missile, and I'm going to be spamming flares out, and I'm going to keep tracking the missile with my eyes because it just smoked missile. So we're going to unpause in three, two, one, go. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, missile. Yep, defeated. Right, that's pretty easy. We could do that all day. Um, and next, we're going to try something a bit harder. Joker is now in the Hornet, and he's firing the A9X best uh, to wear low range missile in. DCS, very, very hard to pull. Fool, I'm going to be doing essentially the same thing to begin with. I'm going to be engines off. I'm going to be turn left hard. You can do right, obviously. Uh, as soon as I'm beaming uh, and spamming flares throughout, uh, as soon as I'm beaming, that's not enough to beat this missile. We need to do a second deviation. So ideally, I'm going to invert and then I'm going to pull down with a second batch of flares. And that may or may not be enough to beat the missile, but hopefully it will. Ready? Right, I'm pausing now. Ready? Yep. Three, two, 
one missile. Power down. Flares. Cool. And pull again, flares. Oh, nice, you dodged. Woo! And that's me dead because you're going to follow up with a kill, but that's dodged. Right, uh, so that is the rear dodging. Okay, so a closer look at the rear aspect dodge. So the hostile is at 1.4 nautical miles. It's going to be the R73 first in half speed mode. So let's go. Missiles away, about a quarter of a second to respond. Engines down, we've got a bank left or right. Flares, spam the hell out of them, as many flares as we can get out. So we're essentially beaming the missile by this point, 90 degrees to the missile, and then we're gonna transition, we're gonna roll over to invert down to give us a chance to get some airspeed back for the next engagement. You can see the missile was fooled right back here. That's us uh, just go back a bit. The R-73 isn't the best seeker head in the world. So about there was when it was fooled. And it's just got so much heat there masking our engines, which are very cold by that point. It never really stood a chance. And we'll just follow us there. We're going to invert and we're going to start trying to get our speed back. Our G never went above about 6G. So we had plenty of headroom there to go up to 9G if we needed to. I was a bit crap there. I was pointing down at that angle. If I'd done that properly, I should be aiming directly down at this point. I'm just not a good enough driver to actually do that. But you can, and you can see the amount of flares here. Okay, the more difficult shot. We've got the A9X now. So let's play that through slow mode. About a quarter of a second to respond. Engines starting to spool down now. Bundle of uh, the first batch of flares for the beam turn going on here. So we're going to turn left, turn a beam. Maxing out about... 6G, I mean, we can go higher than 6G. The thing is, with the more we, the more G we put into this, the more speed we're going to burn off. And bearing in mind, we haven't got any thrust to, to do this with. It's just gravity is all we've got. Uh, where it actually got fooled uh, was not in the first move, not the beam move, but actually the second move, which really would merge into one here. We don't have the ability to, to turn, then head a beam for a while, then turn down. It's all going to have to be merged into one because we've only got... A, two seconds to do this basically so the first we'll just scroll back here the first batch of flares and the turning of beam was here now the second part of the move the second batch of flares and the turning inverted and we want to be heading straight down now to try and get as much speed 6g and it was that second batch of flares and that second move that allowed us to fool the AIM-9X. Uh, the first move, just turning, turning a beam, will not fool the AIM-9X from behind. We've got to do the second move and the second batch of flares to be able to fool that seeker head. And then down, that gives us a chance now to get back our speed and turns our engines back on. <laughs> you see it's found me again. Look, it's chasing me again. Oh, no, it's not. It just looks like it is. So that's a real hard uh, missile to beat. Okay, that's everything I want to cover for close-range IR missile evasion. I hope that helps, and see you later.